early, early, early Purim. I have a question. Um, Wait, wait, wait. We, uh, we have a question yet. that I've been waiting about. He oh, hasn't finished that. Oh, yeah. Well, 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 I thought you were looking at the last question of tonight. And, 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 and uh, just to complete this, uh, the, the, the book by Dr. Ma, uh, you, you, you had commented well, why, what is different about this from the prophet. It is what the prophet said. That's exactly right. So uh, we've actually seen uh, with, with the growth of the internet that uh, there's uh, quite a few teenagers who become multi-millionaires very rapidly through internet. So. Uh, uh, why shouldn't a teenager also become Melech HaMashiach? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Let me proceed it by saying, getting over something that I heard maybe 10, 15 years ago <coughs> here at the shul about, um, uh, I can't remember the personages exactly, but um, some, somebody in Yerushalayim ha had asked that this, this, you know, some uh, very pure tzaddik uh, who was, you know, going to die to, you know, if he if he could bring some kind of message back about when Moshiach was going to come, and uh, what he got after the person died is that the person came to him in a dream and said, uh, when uh, there will be, I, I don't remember how it was put, but basically when people will deal honestly with money, with each other. Now, that's the preceding. Now, uh, about, about a month ago, I got an email, uh, one of the money emails I get, about somebody who had made Aliyah and was there two or three years and ended up coming back to this country. And what he said is, I, I tried, I was in this business, I was in that business, and when I would look to deal in an honest way, the, act, the response I got from everybody without exception was that they would mock me for even thinking like the, the, the cool thing to do was to take advantage of others and, and get out ahead, to like beat them. Uh, and, and that was the thing that, w that, that people would respect. Ah, he's really good. You know, he knows how to cheat really well. He knows how to take advantage of the people he, he does business with. And, th and that they laughed at me, like mocking me, that I would think to do Absolutely. honesty. So uh -huh. my question is, is this, in f I don't know if you would, would know the answer, but is that an accurate portrayal of doing business in Israel? <laughs> and what is to be done about I mean, how can Moshiach come if we're treating each other? Yeah. On, a, on a real material level. If, if, if you ask for an, a sort of nutshell description of the Israeli economic jungle, I would say that's a pretty good assessment of what it's like. It's, uh, so, I mean, it says, uh, you know, Noach Tzadik B'Doyoiso, Noach was Tzadik in this time, where by comparison, the <laughs> other people who were like stealing and exploiting each other. <laughs> the one person who didn't do it, he was not a complete savage. <laughs> and uh, such situations do give opportunities for, you know, great sitkut, but it's true that it's like the, uh, I mean, it's not everyone, it is not. And uh, one, one of the problems there is that one of the worst, biggest ganavim is something called Medinat Yisrael. You know, unfortunately, uh, Unfortunately, uh, because of the, the cuckoo mentality of the governing elite there, that they refuse to teach kids about Shabbos and Judaism and Tyra. So the country is therefore beset by enemies all the time, consuming gigantic so-called defense budgets, and therefore everything is up to the hilt in taxes. And while big fish like... Uh, uh, Mr. Ulmer is uh, sort of, uh, the guy has still not been nailed, the little fish constantly getting tortured and tormented by these huge uh, taxes and by this, uh, this bureaucratic uh, treasury and uh, tax departments. And so life is really miserable economically. It's another reason why people have come to it. Because the honest taxi driver and owner of the Makolas and for the world are just so completely, I mean, disillusioned is not the word for what people 
real ordinary Israelis feel about the Israeli government. This illusion is not worth wow. it. It is more than that. A, a, they, they fall into a disgust and detest the Israeli, and, and everybody feels like they have no idea what they can do. And I'm talking about the honest people. So uh, it is not everybody, and there are, you know, there are tzaddikim, there are people who uh, a price is a price, and uh, they don't we, we, we just, we, we only, uh, each one of us, do what we're capable of doing in our own orbit, in our own area of influence, to try to, to uh, be a, an example of Torah, and to teach Torah, and to urge others to keep the Torah. And uh, I do believe that God is compassionate. He's not going to leave us in this mess forever. And that He's going to have compassion. And even if we are not worthy, that uh, He will send us here. Amen. 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 Is this interesting that, that that would be the vision of Rav Nathan instead of Mashiach? In that He, he hid His own uh, book of uh, healing remedies. And he discouraged the use of uh, healing remedies at that particular time in history. So it's interesting that in the Mosa Mashiach, the, the Mashiach is going to be revealing all these remedies. You, well, you would think he would come with a different uh, set of tricks. In the light of the research I did, the results from the wings of the sun, I have no evidence for this, but I believe that, uh, for one thing, Rav Nachman's own remedies may well have included many material remedies which he put away. But I also believe that, uh, and this comes out of some of his Torahs in the Kutum Aram, that uh, Dr. Mark's idea that the remedies re alluded to are physical remedies need not be the case because the real remedies are yeah. the Torahs with new, yeah. radically new ideas that never showed up before. And that is what any, anybody who will really study the Kuti Muharan will just see completely dazzling uh, chidushim that have never been in the world before. I mean, who speaks about the future song? Find me uh, a rabbi who speaks about songs, let alone the future song. Hmm. I mean, uh, Rav Shlomo was one of the few who really got into music and saw that music is redemption. And Rabbi Nachman uh, was the, uh, the Makom of this. The only one who speaks about dance, the only one who speaks about hand clapping, the only one who, who has the courage to speak about the, the, uh, the, the future song and the Geirim and the, uh, the Mashiach. So it's incredible stuff. I mean, the world has begun to to uh, get to know the Kutimara. All the stuff that we've been brought out, bringing out until now is Kleinekite, and even the, the translations of the Kutimara kind of do justice to the real, totally revolutionary uh, uh, thoughts coming out of it yesterday. You see, you see, obviously in the world, you see all the negative stuff. We spoke about the negative stuff with the Arabs and the Muslims and all this stuff. But we also see tremendous positive things for the Jews. Uh, we see a tremendous amount of non-Jews getting involved in, in, in Kabbalah. Mm -hmm. Abdel, we see totally non-observant Jews becoming interested in Judaism through Kabbalah. We see also this whole tremendous B'nai Noach movement. I mean, it's ex exploding. There's also a tremendous amount of truth that's exploding in, into the world. You see a tremendous amount of Christian groups that are supporting Israel even though they have their, their own um, very selfish reasons for it. But I know that, obviously, I've been around you a little bit. If you can give us a few minutes, of, if you want to, what's happening with your situation when you're dealing with B'nai Noah, when you're dealing with non-Jews who are leaving Yashka. Like, we're having, basically, we're having Messiah wars in the world. We have three Messiahs that are running around, and people are killing each other over it. You have Yashka, you have the other guy, and you have us. Okay, so well, the reference no. was just made to Zechariah 14, and he said at the very beginning of the chapter that this will be on a day that is known to Hashem, that is uh, not night and it's not morning. And unfortunately, say there that it's not night because it's no longer the depth of Golis, but it's not morning because not yet has come about the complete Yuul, and that's right now, where darkness and light are ruling simultaneously, night and day. So night is the specter of these... Uh, the uh, the 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 radicals who are the uh, Ishmaelim uh, uh, that are just uh, trying to wreck the whole world and plunge the world into to 